Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, and we are God's Church of Love online on our Saturday service. We're getting ready to read from Jeremiah chapter 7. Now, in these last days, things are getting really hairy, and things are getting really scary, but God has his people under control. He knows how to take care of, what's, of what belongs to him. So be of good cheer. If you belong to God, you're in good, you're in good shape. All right. Now, we're going to read from Jeremiah. This is not a happy message, but it is encouraging to God's people. So for those of you who have yet to be one of his people, it's time to make that decision. All right. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there his word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter into these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not, in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Let me back up on this. I say this not only to our church, to YouTube, but I say it to America and to the world. And those of you who run these nations, if ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal? murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this place, in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. In this house, which is called by my name, become, excuse me, let me read that again. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place, which was in, in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did, what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up and speaking. Oh, I'm messing up. I'm sorry, you guys. And now, because ye have done all these works with, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking. But ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trusted unto the place which I gave to you and your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh, and I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Mm, boy, this is crazy. Now, let me stop here for a minute. He's getting ready to talk about idol worship and graven images and all of that and all the things that we sacrifice as I'm talking about the center population that uh, do everything that's diametrically opposed to God. See, we think we can tiptoe through the tulips and we can slip, slide, pee, hide. We can do whatever we want to do when we want to do it because we're three times seven. We're grown. Yeah, we got it like that. No, you don't. 
because there's a payday. Everybody has a paycheck coming. And your paycheck is going to come to you and bless you. Or your paycheck is going to come out of your behind. And God's going to rake you over the coals for some of the things, especially you people that are in control, that manipulate other people, that screw up other people's lives, that have blood on your hands. You have to be very careful. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And even though you're on top now and you're in control now, that doesn't mean you're always going to be there. Because the, hard, the higher they are, the harder they fall. Watch yourselves. Get yourself straight with God now while you have time. Because there comes a point where you pass the point of no return. And when God turns you over to a reprobate mind and there are no more chances for you, he's not playing and you will pay. All right, now, let me go on with this. Uh, this is a warning to those that are the enemies of God. And then I have a word of encouragement to, for those of us who are friends of God, who God is on our side, hmm, the people of God. Now, verse 19, verse 18, the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. And the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground. And it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings into your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. And ye shall be my people, and walk ye in the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since that day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken unto thee. That's sad. That's me talking. That's sad. How many of you will not hearken? How many of you will ignore God? Turn a deaf ear to him. Talk to the hand. I ain't got time. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. Mm, mm, mm. But thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. True is perished. Huh, boy, does that sound familiar. And is cut off from their mouth. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Wow. Okay, we're going to read two more verses and then we're done. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away. And take up a lamentation on high places. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. Woo! Woo, that's an indictment against a lot of his churches, you know. So not only are the non-believers on God's bad side, but a lot of you so-called quote-unquote believers are as well. And when you go on Judgment Day, 
you might be one of those that hear that word, uh, depart from me. I never knew you. <laughs> no matter what you say you did in my name hmm. or in my church. Well, anyway. Now, this is what I want to say. This is your warning. See, you have to be careful if you think that you can do what you're big and bad enough to do because God, no matter how big you think you are, God is way bigger, baby. And no matter how how much clout you have, how much pull, power, or whatever, money, whatever you have, God can turn all of that into dust. He can inhale and you can drop like a little dead fly. Because the breath that's in your nostrils, with all your arrogance and all your narcissistic attitudes, the breath that's in your two little nostrils, guess what? That came from God. And he can choose to drop you and take your breath away. He can choose to make your heart stop. Even worse, if you're not that concerned about yourself, he can choose to attack the loved ones, the ones you care the most for. He knows how to send the devil after those people in ways that torture you for years for all the blood money that you've earned by victimizing the people in the streets that you consider the little people, the people that don't count, the little insignificant ones. Yeah. Well, remember, God is looking and booking, baby. And you may not be keeping score of your sins and your abominations, but God is. And God is a master mathematician. He will not. He will not get an equation wrong. Never. So be careful. Because payday is coming. And as Marlene and we were talking earlier about this, the store, the, the, the apocalypse of the stores and the trucks and all these businesses. Things are collapsing, you guys. Right before our eyes. While we're sitting up there being mesmerized by the media, being mesmerized by all the forms of entertainment and the lies on the news, as Rashad was talking about, all this nonsense. But listen, no matter what's going on, if you're not staying close to God, if you're not connected to God with that spiritual umbilical cord, I ain't talking about lip service. I'm not talking about buying a card and shaking a hand and giving some money and getting a little membership thing. No, I'm talking about an umbilical cord attached to the heart of God himself. If you're not attached, you're going to be in a very bad way when the nitty gritty hits the fan in this country and around this world. And it will be a domino effect. Will you be ready naturally or supernaturally? Will you be ready? Hmm. Will you be connected enough to hear God's voice when he says, buy up water? When he says, move to the city? When he tells you to stay in the house tonight? Are you going to have an ear to hear? Because see, God will protect his people. He will guide us. He will shield us. He will help us and he will provide for us in every way possible. But that will not be the case for the enemies of the Lord. So I say to you enemies who take pride in blaspheming God, those of you who take pride in turning your back on him and ignoring him, those of you who think you're so intellectually renowned and, and established that you have no need of faith because you're self-contained. Well, baby cakes, you got a real surprise coming. But I admonish you and I beg you, reconsider. Reconsider because a logical brain will never be able to conceptualize or fathom faith. It's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different dimension. 
whole different reality. You got to be in the spirit to understand the things of the spirit. So just because you don't get it, just because it sounds like hogwash to you, does not mean it is. Just because you cannot see the air you breathe, does not mean you're not breathing it. Hmm. Try living without that air. Try it. Right. Same with God. You might want to believe in, in evolution and all this other mess. And you believe in, in abortion and you believe in all the little things that they're doing and human trafficking and all of this mess that they're doing in people's lives. And you really think that all this stuff happening in the government with the political system, you think it's all a, a reality. No, baby. It's a false reality. It's a facade they place in front of you so you think you got a little say in the matter. No, you don't. It's a game, baby. It's a game. And it's a very slow, it's like putting the frog in cold water, letting him swim around, and then turning the flame up slowly. And after a while, it gets warm and comfortable, and the frog gets groggy and relaxed, and he doesn't know he's getting ready to be frog soup. And many of you have no idea you're dying because there is a whole system set up to destroy mass destruction in slow motion doesn't hurt as much now does it for example i was in the hospital 2016 i'm just making an example real quick and they had to stick a needle in my back four times i i went to the hospital four times and had five procedures before those procedures in those each visit they had to stick a needle in my back stick it into the lining of my lung and draw out the fluid. You talk about pain, I never felt no mess like that in my life. And since I never gave birth, I had a miscarriage, but I never gave birth. So I can't relate to labor pains. But this one here, no. I was ready to go on hospice the fourth time. I said, I'm not doing this again. I can't take it. And the Lord encouraged me to do it. It was only God that enabled me. Now, I'm making a point. I'm making a point with this. So when they stuck that needle in the last time, I begged the man. I said, now, I'm only doing this because God told me to do it because I'm ready to go on hospice. I don't want to keep going through this. I'd rather die than to go through this crap over and over again. So if you have to do this, if there's no way around it, would you do it in increments, slow motion, I'd rather be pinched every few seconds than to have feel like I'm being stabbed in my back. The man took so long, but he was so patient, and he inched that baby in. And that was the only reason I was able to take it. Now, listen, listen. That's what the government is doing. That's what the world system, the money systems are doing, the powers that be. They're slowly stabbing you in your back. You don't get that. They're slowly stabbing you in your back. And you don't know it because they're sugarcoating everything. And they got music over here and money over there and the lottery over there and all these different things, alcohol and drugs, and whatever. They got all these, all these little sex games and sex dolls and sex this. And, oh, man, they got you covered. And all the time they're sticking that knife in, in ink increments increments and you get a little twitch and a little itch and a little pinch but you don't get that you're being killed ever so slowly see all of this is part of the judgment of god you go for the okie doke you fall for their system you fall in their system hmm because you're not listening to god you turn the deaf ear to him so you have to be careful who you put your trust in it is better to trust in God than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in God than to put confidence in yourself. 
Because you ain't all that in 10 bag of chips like you think you are. <clears throat> all right. Now, what I ask you is, take time to pray. Say, Lord, even if you don't believe in him, even if you're not sure he's even real, if you're real, if you're there, help me, help me understand if this is, if this crazy old woman on that screen is saying anything that's right, that has any kind of uh, credence to it, show me, help me get it because I have been so disillusioned or I have been, I have been so intellectualized that I, it's hard for me to fathom faith. So if there's anything to this, would you begin to communicate that to me in a way that I can grasp it? Help me out here. Help thou me, my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Whatever you got to do, but at least open your mind to the possibility that this stuff is real. All right, now here's another thing I want you to look at. Okay, you saw how I talked about how slowly they put that needle in my back. And I was able to take it. And it made me cry and all of that, but it didn't make me scream at the top of my lungs like it did before when they went right for the jugular. Now, the same with you. Everything's going in slow motion. It's even slower now than what is going on. See, we see things in increments, but it's going way slower. And the reason it's going slow is because the slower something happens, the more gradual it is the less we are alarmed. And if we're not alarmed and they're dummying us down through Facebook and selfies and, 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 uh, and all of these mini series on TV and all these movies and these sci-fis and these sex movies and these romance movies and we go and we go shopping and we get all these credit cards and and we're just all of these human pacifiers, the cigarettes, the, the weed, the, the bottle, the, 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 the bedside manner, the sex dolls, the, the pep, all of this nonsense, the prostitutes. The whole system is set up to lull you into a coma. And yes, we are now, I would consider us the modern day zombie. That's what I would consider us. The masses, modern day zombies, functioning zombies. You go to work, you pay your bills, and then you screw your life away. Modern day zombies, you live for the devil. You're going straight to hell. You don't care. You have no conscience. You have a reprobate mind. You could give a fly and you know what. And you know what word comes to your mind when I say that. Because sin will abound. The love of many will wax cold. And that's what's happening in this society. We don't care. Just put money in my pocket and keep me comfortable. Keep that pacifier in my mouth and keep me happy. Is everybody happy? Yeah, that's the way you want it. Eat, drink, and be merry. That's the way you want it. You don't want no God telling you what you can and what you can't do, no matter how much is for your own good and your protection. You don't want to hear that. You're three times seven. Hey, I'm grown. Mess with me, tell me what. Shh. I want me a piece of tail. I'm going to give me a piece of tail. Shoot. I want to get high. I'm going to get high. Tell me what I can't do. I work for this money. I spend it however I want. That's your attitude. You watch what God's attitude is towards you. Now, let's flip this burger over. Because those of you who are trying to live for God, I want you to hear what God has to say to you. All right. Let's go to Isaiah 44. Yet now, hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb. The womb. For those of you who think that a baby is not a baby until he's nine months ready to be born. From the womb 
which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jezurim, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe his hand unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who as I shall call it shall declare it and set in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming, and shall come. Let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Hmm. Now, listen, I'm going to move on down for the sake of time. He talks about graven, and, you know, graven images and all of that. And the crazy part is man got to create the doggone image. And then he's got to put it here and put it there and put it there and dust it off and polish it and all of that. And with some of the wood they burn, they cook, they make cakes, whatever. But this is an, an inanimate object. And they worship this thing that they had to make. God is self-contained. No man made him. Hmm. But that's the one you won't listen to. Bizarre, huh? Yeah. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> anyway, verse 24, thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, there it is again, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreads abroad the earth by itself, that frustrated the tokens of the liars and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backwards and maketh their knowledge foolish, that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, listen, God's people, thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. That saith to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Listen, we are in good hands. We are well taken care of. It shall be well with us because we are keeping the faith. Whatever you do, no matter what life throws at you, no matter how Satan catches you on your blind side, no matter what rugs are pulled out from under you, no matter what comes against you, remember, if God be for you, who can be against you? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you lose when you gain God. You can lose the world, but you gained your soul. But what shall it be if a man gain the whole world, but lose his soul? Oh my goodness. That's a total loss, an eternal loss. You don't want that. So stay with God. Stay in the compounds of his fellowship with his people. Stay in fellowship with him in the spirit, in his word. Stay in fellowship, stay in faith. Because God is not a deadbeat dad. God loves you more than the most loving mother could ever love you. Because God is love. He is the origin of love. He is the person, He uh, the persona. He is the oh, all encompassing of every aspect of love. He is love. The Bible says God is love. Now, the his agape love is way above human love. It's galactic. It's not even earthly. Nothing like anything you felt on this earth. I don't care how much you loved anybody. It never comes anywhere close to God's love. And when God loves baby, you're in good shape. Even when he's 
whooping your behind, even when he's taking you to the woodshed, even when he's got you, even when he tells you you're grounded, when he got you on lockdown, when he's when he's got you in a tight place, no matter what he's got to pull you through, you're in good hands when you're in God's hands because you're in his love. He's mindful of you. He cares for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Huh. Wow. Listen, know that no matter what goes on in this country, no matter what judgment befalls this earth, you are in good hands. It shall be well with you. Now, you may have to deal with some stuff, but you remember the prophet when he was out there and the Lord had to send ravens every day, that man, he didn't have to go out hunting. He didn't have to go fishing. The Lord delivered right at his front door, right in front of his little toes, hand delivered fish to feed him with by the beak of a raven every single day day he was supernaturally provided for now you may not be in the comfort of the of the uh the hilton hotel or or somewhere in bel-air or beverly hills you may not live sweet like that with all the comforts of home but god will see to it that you're protected your needs are met and he takes very good care of his own maybe bizarre ways that you're Provision comes, but your provision will come. God will not forsake you. He will not forget about you. <laughs> Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Years ago, the Lord gave me a prophecy. And I believe we're seeing it unfold as time goes on. I've seen it a number of times, even during the financial collapse. Listen. Here's the prophecy, because I think this prophecy is going to relive itself again and again. There is a lane. One lane is for those who don't believe in God, who don't live for God, who give him lip service, who sit up in his church and don't live a squat for him. You've got another lane for people who are living for God, believe in God, obey him, read his word. They're not perfect, they mess up, but they hurry up and clean up and get their act together because they want to please God. They want to be in with him. They want him with all their might. Now, you got these two lanes. On the left lane, where the people are just doing their own thing, the, the lane of the world, so to speak, or worldly standards, that lane, when judgment comes, that lane is going to be lined with flames. That lane is going to be lined with spikes and spurs and traps and all kind of mess and disasters and hardships, sickness, all kind of mess. Judgment, big time. But the right lane where people are pursuing God and his holiness, those people are going to experience to the same measure that the other people are seeing judgment fall on them. God's people, God's real people, his remnant of the last days, are going to experience blessings, miracles, miraculous provision, miraculous healings. Yeah, miraculous deliverance, miraculous favor, all kind of things protection, divine guidance. All of this is going to happen for God's people. Now, they may not be rich, but they will be well taken care of. You hear what I'm saying? And they will not live in fear. They will not live under the cloud of a threat because God will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. But then you got those in that other lane, the other ones, the ones that don't have time for God. Those are the frogs that will die ever so slowly. And they're partying back, not realizing their death 
is climbing up their spinal column, not realizing they're getting ready to shut down any second. They don't see the judgment coming because the world system has stuck pacifiers and put sparkles and all kind of illusions out there to make it look like everything is cool, everything's copacetic. They're hollering peace and safety, but God's got sudden destruction coming. Which lane are you going to be found in when that destruction comes? Which lane will you choose? God knows why you're choosing it. He's not a patsy. He's not a sugar daddy. There are a whole lot of sugar daddies out there that will allow a woman to marry him for his money, and he knows it. But see, God ain't about that. He's not going to allow people to hook up with him for what he's got to offer. No. You got to want him. It ain't about the goodies. He's not your Santa Claus. He's not your welfare line. Listen. When judgment comes, what lane will you be in? Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I've been out there long enough to know the streets have nothing to offer me but BS and heartache. I got all my goodies from God. What are my goodies? Peace, joy, love, inner satisfaction. Yes, wholeness, inner healing, hope, purpose, significance, self-esteem, confidence, faith, joy, life, worth living healing in my body, provision, help when I need it, because God is a very present help in trouble. Now, which lane will you find yourself in? Which lane will you choose? The haphazard lane of the world? Hmm? The one that wants to party their way to hell? thinking there is no hell, so we're going to party, we're going to do everything we can do while we're here. As Mr. T, was it Mr. T who said it? Yeah, Mr. T. I pity the fool that thinks he's going to make it in that lane. Mm. All right, I say to you, choose. I'm not going to beg you, I'm not going to plead. I've stayed my case. Choose. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You gonna be a flunky for the devil? Hmm? Or are you gonna flourish in the courts of the Lord? I sure hope you make the right choice. God bless you.